Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. We're going to be discussing NVIDIA's GTC conference because, yeah, while there were no new gaming cards announced, I have to say that this conference was actually really interesting. First of all, NVIDIA kind of confirmed their GPU roadmap, and they've actually been pretty cagey regarding their GPU roadmap for the past several years. Typically, we haven't really known what NVIDIA have been planning next, unlike back in the early days when NVIDIA were a lot more forthcoming. One could be a little skeptical and say this is because they're facing a lot of pressure from AMD, who are, of course, a lot more vocal with what their uh, future products are. Nevertheless, we know that in 2022, this is when you're going to see Ampere next, and I'm highly doubtful that the architecture is going to be called that, of course. Most likely, this is Lovelace, with 2024 being the Ampere next next. Now, up until this point, we actually thought that this could be Hopper, although perhaps not, because Hopper actually might not uh, be a thing. Instead, maybe it's going to be called something else. And the reason that this is a possibility is because Grace is going to be a CPU architecture. Yep, that's right. NVIDIA are getting into CPUs and it's going to be a really big deal, but we'll get more into that in just a moment. But with these next generation uh, architectures, of course, we don't really know too much officially from NVIDIA, only that naturally there will be pretty large progressions compared to their older architectures. There have been a ton of rumors concerning Lovelace, and I've covered them already on the channel, but just as a quick refresher, I'm hearing that Lovelace is probably going to be in the you know earlier part of next year, but honestly, it's really tentative, and I would not be surprised if it's not a bit later. In fact, to my understanding, RDNA 3 is not going to launch until the second half of next year, and frankly, because of all of the shortages, it makes it even trickier. You also need to take into consideration that these roadmaps may not pertain necessarily to GPU launches for the desktop, as after all, NVIDIA are in so many different segments at the moment, so many different markets, HPC, you know, uh, self-driving cars, obviously gaming GPUs, and so on and so on, that the timing of the launches could be different, and honestly, I'm kind of thinking that that's probably going to be the case. And personally, I'm guessing that we'll see that, say, server processors launch first, or server GPUs, excuse me. But again, who knows at this point? However, regardless of all of that, Lovelace is going to be a significant leap forward. And, um, you know, speaking to a couple of sources at the moment, RDNA 3 is going to be a two and a half times performance uh, leap. So RDNA 3 is going to be pretty damn massive over what we have with RDNA 2. However, I think NVIDIA were pretty confident that uh, AMD were going to be hitting these type of performance targets because just about everyone knows that AMD would be embracing chiplets for their GPUs as well. So yeah, in my personal opinion anyway, the GPU market is going to get really interesting. But now I want to move on to the next piece of news, which honestly I think is probably the biggest deal that we're going to see in some time in tech, and that is that NVIDIA are firmly embracing the ARM uh, CPU architecture. So there is definitely a shift at the moment in momentum, with x86 certainly coming a long way, especially since, let's say, the Zen microprocessor architecture launched from AMD. We saw, of course, CPU core counts uh, increase significantly, and if we look at something along the lines of Zen 3 with the 5950X, 16 cores, 32 threads, IPC has increased, you know, and it's a really good processor architecture. However, there are definitely arguments, and it's probably a bit outside the video to really go super in-depth into these arguments. But um, yeah, there's a lot of arguments to be said that ARM, especially in certain deployments, has a lot of benefits over, uh, of course, what we can see with x86. And if you've been following the channel for any length of time, A, thank you very much, and B, um, I put out a rumor that I was hearing that NVIDIA were actually planning to release their own CPU architecture, well, based on ARM, of course. And obviously there is um, a lot of stuff for NVIDIA and ARM. Obviously they want to actually acquire the company and we're waiting to see whether this is approved or not. I'm not really sure either way, however, NVIDIA, of course, are still free to use the ARM architecture. And again, uh, to my understanding, anyway, it was being tested in a SOC, and we'll get into actually a SOC which uses this in a moment as well. And I was hearing that NVIDIA were um, 
actually experiencing pretty significant uh, performance with this architecture that we're testing it with games. However, of course, this is only one particular configuration. And obviously with socks and you know GPUs and technology as a whole, you can do many different things with it. And this seems to be the case with Grace. So yeah, perhaps this is why we won't see Hopper for the future GPU from NVIDIA, which of course was supposed to be chiplet based. So Grace um, is very interesting for a number of reasons, as it significantly uh, turns the uh, problems that NVIDIA have been facing with not just uh, connection and communication to the GPU, but also memory bandwidth and feeding it from main system memory. So basically speaking, as Jensen was pointing out in the GTC conference, which of course I will link in the video description, when it comes to local memory on the GPU, or even trying to feed uh, data from one GPU, let's say GPU A to B, it's not too bad. And you can accomplish this with multiple different ways, including of course uh, bridges and whatever else. The problem starts to become a lot more severe though, when you have let's say DDR4 memory and you want to uh, access memory or oh, sorry, data which is in DDR4 memory. Obviously, not only do you have the fact that the speed of DDR4 memory is, well, paltry compared to HBM2, but furthermore, you've got other considerations like the actual links to the uh, GPU itself, you know, across, across the various buses. So obviously you're connecting the uh, main system memory to the CPU, and then, you know, from there you have to feed the data to the GPU. And you can do certain things like NVIDIA have NVLink, but as Jensen was stating, you know, the, the CPUs just don't have that number of uh, NVLinks available. And this brings us to Grace. According to NVIDIA, obviously we'll have to test this independently, but according to their data, we're looking at up to 10 times faster performance than a similarly equipped x86 server. Furthermore, the GPU data can be transferred up to 30 times faster, this is aggregate bandwidth, just to be clear, compared to today's leading servers. Grace will also use LPDDR5 memory. So naturally this offers considerably more bandwidth than DDR4 as we're starting to see that shift anyway for desktop. And frankly, I'm extremely excited to see what Zen 4 along with Alder Lake and other such architectures can bring to the table with that memory bandwidth. But yes, so not only do you have this new architecture which provides considerably more uh, unified cache coherency, but then you've got the HBM memory on the GPU as well. And basically this thing, uh, well, yeah, I mean, the technical term is it's going to kick butt. So Grace itself does actually utilize, and there's an official web page, by the way, now for Grace CPU. So I'm going to read this verbatim. Uh, next generation ARM Neoverse cores, as the parallel compute capabilities of CPUs continue to advance, workloads can still be gated by serial tasks running on the CPU. A fast and efficient CPU is a critical component of system design to enable maximum workload acceleration. The new, uh, sorry, the NVIDIA Grace CPU int integrates next generation ARM uh, Neoverse cores to deliver high performance in a power efficient design, making it easier for scientists and researchers to do their life's work. So there's a couple of questions, of course. The first, and uh, Jensen was very clear that he believes that this is, this is uh, ARM based processors are gonna start making their way into other things as well, including laptops. And obviously Windows can certainly be deployed on ARM. Obviously you can basically emulate x86 uh, code on an ARM based processor. And there are a number of questions I've got. The first, he says, trying to adjust his phone so it doesn't drop on the floor because he was taking notes on it. Uh, the first question is, well, what is the shape of computers in five or 10 years time? Are, for example, Intel and AMD also going to have their own alternatives? Obviously, you know, they know that ARM is becoming increasingly popular. So it, I do wonder about this. The second is, is a variant of one of these socks going to find its way into the Nintendo Switch Pro? We discussed the Switch Pro quite a bit recently on the channel, so I don't want to take up too much video discussing it here, but it's hard to deny that, you know, one of these socks would make an excellent offering. However, Nintendo typically don't go for kind of cutting edge technology simply because of production costs. So maybe not. The next question is if this architecture, Grace, was the particular architecture I was being told of that NVIDIA were experimenting with in its lab. NVIDIA also have mentioned like Grace Next. Uh, so perhaps that was it, or maybe it was an entirely different ARM processor. 
Who honestly knows? And I frankly doubt we're ever going to get an official answer for this, but it's going to be very interesting to me to see what the future holds from NVIDIA and just computing in general at the moment. I think that we're, we're really starting to see a lot of very, very, very cool stuff. And it's hard to deny that, you know, I know a lot of people are not particularly super excited about things like self-driving cars and AI and all, you know, neural research and all of that. And I do understand that many people just want to go pew, pew, pew and play games. You know, I, I totally understand. However, I believe that, you know, we're going to see some pretty large fundamental changes to our way of life over the next several years. And I'm not saying that NVIDIA are going to be solely responsible for this. You know, companies like Intel, Dell even, you know, AMD and so on and so on are all making massive changes and, uh, you know, pretty big contributions. But for me, I guess I'm kind of a futurist in many ways. And I, I do wonder what we're going to be seeing, I suppose, in, you know, three, four, five, ten years time. It's going to be very interesting to see just what is possible. And I think the next frontier, you know, the next really big frontier for me is to see what RDNA 3 can bring to the table, given it's going to be chiplet based, I have to admit. Um, I'm just extremely excited to see what a potential RDNA 3, uh, RDNA 3 based GPU could be. And as a smaller side too, um, CDNA 2, you know, has already been fairly well established what the specifications will be. And uh, again, I'm hearing it's going to be late this year if we would leak that. However, I'm actually more interested with CDNA 3. I don't know if you've noticed, there seems to be a pattern here with uh, AMD and 3 being really cool. And yeah, CDNA 3, I'm hearing, is going to be a much larger leap than uh, what we saw from CDNA 1 to 2. I don't have too much insight into exactly why this is. I'm trying to do some more digging. But it does seem that both NVIDIA and AMD are somewhat concerned with what Intel's plans are for the GPU market. Frankly, NVIDIA you know, and AMD are pretty established in those markets, and Intel haven't really proven anything yet. So I will be somewhat skeptical, but still. And also, uh, just one other kind of rumor that I'd like to discuss, and that is that um, apparently Konami have actually been licensing out the Metal Gear Solid IP. And if you've been a regular viewer for some time, you'll know that I was saying that I was actually hearing that Hideo Kojima was not even slightly involved in the development of Metal Gear Solid. And to my understanding with the Metal Gear Solid kind of remake slash title, it was not being actually handled internally by Konami at all. Now at the end of the day, and I will stress this, Please take that stuff as like a, a you know a pinch of salt. At the end of the day, uh, my sources in the gaming side of things are nowhere near as good as my sources within like hardware. And to be honest with you, until I'm actually playing the game or until I'm seeing an official announcement, I always am somewhat skeptical. But still, I personally am kind of thinking that Metal Gear Solid is going to be a thing. There was also another rumor that there were a ton of uh, Metal Gear Solid games that were kind of being remade or re-released or something like that on the PS5 as well. But again, it's kind of sketchy. So I'm going to be interested to see what actually happens with Metal Gear Solid. I'm still a few things I'm not actually allowed to say regarding it, although I don't honestly know whether my source was telling the truth or whether they had information wrong. Uh, but I'm still going to, you know, respect their wishes and not say what they asked me not to. But I'm pretty confident that if Metal Gear, Gear Solid, excuse me, is a real thing for the PS5. Um, okay, how can I say this without actually breaking what I was told? Okay, so if it's true, it's going to be a tour de force uh, of, you know, what the console is actually capable of. That's all I'll say on the topic. And uh, yeah, so I just wanted to throw that in and uh, kind of round out the video. But anyway, I think that's just about it for this video. If you've enjoyed it, you know what to do. You click the like button, of course. And also let me know down below, what do you think the future is for x86 and ARM? Next year, of course, we're gonna see Zen 4. This year, we're gonna see Warhol from AMD. Intel will be releasing Older Lake and I'm somewhat hopeful. But ARM is making a really big play for it. And we've, of course, already seen what Apple are doing with its own, you know, M1 Silicon. So let me know down below. With that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.